Hello, everyone. My name is Atita Arora, and uh, I'm an active contributor in Search Community. I currently work with My Toys Group, and today we are going to be talking about exploring the alchemy of uh, Kafka streaming along with Solar Cloud. I hope I make use of enough time because my slides are a little longer. So my agenda, of course, I would be discussing about the problem, the proposed solution, some improvements that we made, and I hope we leave some time for questions and suggestions. So I would skip this part just to give you a brief that My Toys uh, GmbH was founded in 1999 at subsidiary of Auto Group. And we have various other shops that we support, which have products ranging from uh, pregnancy to everything about kids, wide range of shoes and home furnishing. Do check out. We have over 4 million active users. And statistically speaking, we serve about 1.3 million searches per day, have conversion rate of uh, around 9%. A uh, small, small snapshot from the last uh, Black Friday, we served about 26.2 million queries in one single day. So after that introduction, a little bit about our platform that we have changed. So previously, it used to look like this, that we had the data source, uh, the data that would consist of everything from the product data, promotional data, data from data warehousing, and everything and whatnot. All of this data was consumed by our batch processes. Uh, which is called Solar Importer. The main idea of the Solar Importer was to transform the data based on the business logic and put the documents into Solar, which are then served on the portal through the product service. Uh, the subsidiary process was also supported here for the price and stock, of course, for e-commerce, that's a very essential thing to maintain the uh, challenging uh, prices, uh, you know, attractive prices and the stock update. But to mention here that the stock updates were not processed when this batch process was running. That was one of the biggest crucial disadvantages. To add here is also that uh, there were some shortcomings uh, that we were able to support only the limited number of products due to limited resources. The complete catalog reindex, which was happening twice a day, was taking close to four hours each time. And as I just mentioned, that we were not processing the price and stock updates every time this batch processes was running, which means that, the no, uh, that there were no product updates while the catalog reindex was happening. Scaling, of course, does look worrisome in such kind of approach, and there was no disaster recovery mechanism. Another bad thing is that we had the bulky document size because we are serving everything from solar. So to counter this, we wanted to plan something that would help us in the long run. So to begin with, we wanted to keep only the searchable data in solar to reduce the number of fields in solar. And we plan to use Redis for supporting solar with this thing. We wanted to reduce the pipeline time to not spend four hours, but rather should be done in the near real time. We managed to reduce the index footprint by reducing the number of fields from 548 fields to 78 fields for all the shops. The disaster recovery management was achieved through the Kafka replay using the Kafka Connect that I will, I'll be showing you in the next slide. Of course, there was no wait for the full re-index anymore. We are processing everything in real time and the infrastructure scalability management was achieved through the Kubernetes. So to give you a sneak peek as to how exactly the architecture looks like, I hope I can do justice. I would have to go back to the architecture. Okay, come up, come up. Okay, I guess everyone can see this. So here the data source stays intact as it was, instead of being consumed by the batch process, we are publishing the respective data into the respective topic the topics. And this is consumed by the product data topology, which processes now the data as per the business logic and combines them and publishes them into one single topic, which is then consumed by the master and the variant topology. These are very heavyweight and highly uh, available and heavy data processing topologies that we have. Over here, you see, is the solar adapter uh, topology. The main aim here is to transform the data into uh, the solar documents and publish them into the respective shop topic. So uh, after this, the data is being read from here into the Kafka Connect cluster, which is then consumed by the solar sync and pushed into the solar, which is served through the search service. The other data, which is non-searchable, is published into the Redis and is served through Redis through the product service. So that was, of course, uh, the major transformation that we did to the uh, platform. Of course, we were expecting to see bigger challenges. So we did face some challenges on the Kafka streams. First and the foremost was the slow and expensive Kafka state restoration, because we're talking about the data magnitude of almost 100 GB. 
So we used cold bootstrapping to help us here. I'm going to be showing you how we did that in the next slide. Uh, we had to make a lot of customizations to the Kafka Solar Connect because uh, we ran into the race condition with the document addition and deletions. So we had to modify the behavior as well. For horizontal scalability, we based it out of matrix, used uh, uh, matrix here was consumer lags. If the consumer lags increases the certain number, we spin up a new pot in the Kubernetes to make sure that the consumer lag is taken care of. The RocksDB customization was done to ensure the cold bootstrapping is supported. I would be showing you that. Uh, of course, as I also already mentioned, that we are maintaining four high volume topologies. So managing such big amount of data was very challenging. We were using the self-managed Kafka here, but we migrated to MSK here. Uh, we used Mirror Maker to come to our rescue. So this is what I was talking about, that by default, uh, in Kafka, we use change log topic uh, for the uh, state recovery and replay. But uh, and in this case, uh, we were taking almost close to like 24 hours to recover our kind of data. So we had to modify this default behavior instead of using change log topic for recovery data and replay, we used the active uh, rocks TV. And every time the standby went down, instead of replaying everything from change log topic, we copied the rocks TV from the active into the standby. With this approach, the data recovery was lightning fast. Uh, it's like eight seconds for 100 GB of data. And we were able to recover this uh, challenge pretty well. So this is called cold bootstrapping. And what did we improve in um, general as a whole uh, transformation that we were able to update the products in real time. We got rid of the index pipeline, which took four hours. Now everything is getting updated in real time. We upgraded solar from solar six to solar eight, eight, two. We also moved from master slave to solar cloud. We managed to switch to manage Kafka. And now we have uh, corrected the architectural flaw that everything was served from solar. Now we are using Redis to support solar with the non-changing fields. Just in case if you have questions about the future work, we are planning to open up to community and we are doing an intensive review of the changes that we have made. And we are going to be opening up to the community for the customizations that we have made to the Kafka Connect, the state recovery library slash uh, cold bootstrapping and the Kafka Connect customizations. So just in case you have any questions, please flee, feel free to reach out to me and some references for your online, um, offline references. So thank you. I hope I was able to cover this in um, five minutes. Any questions? Thank you so much, uh, Atita. That was uh, fascinating. You covered such a lot in a short time. Uh, I don't see questions here, but I've got a few. Uh, firstly, thanks for uh, yeah sharing those upstream changes that uh, you're anticipating coming back to the community. That's that's wonderful to hear. And you also listed some challenges there, the major challenges that you faced with the uh, yeah with the new rollout that you described. I wonder how did those challenges fit with the anticipated challenges? So like expectations versus reality. Were the hardest parts the part, the part that you expected to be, or yeah, was it really quite unpredictable in the end? Well, I, I would say that that's a very good question. And in fact, uh, we were anticipating changes. We were in fact, you know, when we did the, the POC, we were not anticipating the changes like the race condition that I spoke about. We were not even looking forward to such kind of race condition that the deletions would come before the additions and we would run into like the blocked uh, infra completely. Similar to that was that uh, the bootstrapping that I spoke about, the bootstrapping took close to like 24 hours the first time we tried. We were not even anticipating that because we did not understand or we did not actually estimate the data would grow as big as like 100 GB. So yes, I would say that in a lot of places, we did not anticipate all of this to go uh, haywire. It, it took us a lot uh, of time. It took us about eight months to implement this, but we're pretty happy how it looks right now. That's great. It's always encouraging to hear how you know how it works in the real world. In eight months, yeah, it, it sounds quite reasonable considering that the challenges that you face. But it's, it's always helpful to benchmark with organizations sure. like like that. So thank you.